Oh, those wacky Byzantines. After the fall of the Roman Empire came the rise of the Byzantines, which lasted just shy of a millennium, though its citizens just called themselves Romans. Either way, a lot can happen in 1,000 years, and so here are some of the wildest stories. These are the top 10 unusual things that happened in the Byzantine Empire. And hey, if you think you know a good story or fact that belongs on this list, please let us know in the comments below. Number 10. How Anastasius I chose his successor. Anastasius had a problem. It was getting to that time where he'd have to pick a successor, but our boy had three nephews that all seemed pretty good for the role. So he decided that the best course of action was to get three couches and place a message within one of them. Whoever sat on the couch would get the crown. But here's the thing about couches. They can kind of seat more than one person. So by coincidence, no one actually ended up sitting on the couch with the message, and whether or not he was fed up with the whole thing or not, he decided that the next person to enter the room would be Emperor, which ended up being Justin, the illiterate captain of his guard. Weirdest thing? Justin was actually a pretty solid Emperor, and his successor, Justinian, was even better. Number 9. The Election of Jovian When Emperor Julian was wounded in the Battle of Samara, he named Saturninius Secundus Salutius as his successor, but the Praetorian turned down his offer. Unfortunately, the Emperor Emperor died before he could name another, and so the army was tasked with selecting a new emperor. Confusingly, Jovian was named as the successor, though none could really determine why or remember voting for him. Some suggested that he'd just been confused with a different Jovanius, who'd also been put in the running. Others theorized that some of the soldiers may have confused Jovanius for Julianus, and thought that their emperor had possibly possibly returned from the grave. All I can say is Lamau. Number 8. The Adventures of Leo VI the Wise Leo VI, ruler in disguise. During Leo's rule, a bishop by the name of Liutprand would tell a story of how the emperor would occasionally disguise himself and wander through Constantinople. The idea was that he'd be able to see the city through the eyes of an occupant, where, if he'd done so as an emperor, everyone would likely hide all of their wrongdoings. Now, one story claims that he was captured by guards, and thus he was able to bribe them twice to secure his escape. Now when a third squad captured him, they didn't take the bribe, and so he rewarded their honesty and dismissed the other two patrols. Honestly, that's just really smart. Or wise. Eh, funny. Number 7. The Silk Industry In the 4th century, there was a material that's production was entirely controlled by a single country. The material was silk, and the country was China. Due to the Byzantine Empire's ongoing wars and other difficulties with trade, Justinian had decided to take matters into his own hands. Hiring two Persian monks who had discovered the existence of the silkworms, these two thieves stole the worms as eggs, hiding the goods within their bamboo walking sticks and feeding their captives with mulberry provided by the empire. Once returned, the Byzantines had no trouble replicating the conditions required by the worms to produce their silk, which annihilated the Chinese and Persian monopoly. Number 6. The Aima Prophecy During the reign of Emperor Manuel I, a prophecy was made, though it more reads like one of those weird numerology conspiracies. See, the Greek word Aima means blood, and the previous rulers had been Alexis, Ionis, and then came Manuel. Fearing that this spelled doom, but also believing that the sequence had to be fulfilled, Manuel proceeded to name his daughter's fiancé as Alexis. Same with his illegitimate son, and also his legitimate son. Alexius II was then deposed by his cousin Andronikos, which began the sequence again. As Andronikos had a cousin Isaac of Cyprus, he tried to stay away from him, but was ultimately deposed by another person entirely. Isaac II! Angelus! The sequence did eventually pop up some years later, the reason for which is heavily debated as either conspiracy or coincidence. Number 5. Chariot Racing and the Nika Riots Chariot racing was a big-time sport in the Empire. The sport was so popular that it would put modern football hooligans to shame. It's important to understand that this was the best way for civilians to output any frustrations they had, be they social, political, or otherwise. As Emperor Justinian I was disliked for his high taxes and corruption of several officials, when the race began, the crowd was all 
already irritable. As the track could be seen from the palace, and vice versa, the crowd began to become more riled up, chanting the word Nika, the word meaning victory or win. And they eventually broke out of the arena, sieging the palace. They were then aided by senators, and Justinian sent one of his more popular senators to turn the crowds against each other. The crowds eventually dispersed, and then Justinian sent his soldiers to execute the populace who had participated. In the end, half of Constantinople had been burned, and Justinian remained the ruler. Number 4. Greek Fire Yeah, it's actually not Greek. This weapon was created by the Byzantines, a unique concoction that was only possible due to their position as the crossroads of a massive increase with international relations. What it essentially ended up being was well, a flamethrower, which used various resins as the base and pumped air from a bellows-like contraption to eject the burning liquid from its container. Many accounts describe it as impossible to extinguish even with water, and was frequently deployed in naval combat alongside primitive grenades. Despite this, the fire was not actually the most effective weapon, but it's interesting that the modern versions of the weapon have also recently seen action. And it's also just kind of interesting to learn that the use of fire in combat has actually been around for a while. Number 3. Macho Manuel When Manuel I came into power, he learned of the jousting matches held by the Crusaders and was just captivated by the idea, organizing and holding his own. He even participated, being considered something of a physical powerhouse himself. Some descriptions of of him, like pro wrestling, might have been overdone a bit. They claim that he slew 40 Turks in a single day by himself, also that he stole a banner by himself from the Hungarians, and also that he drove his horse through a squad of 500 Turks untouched. Yeah, seriously, this dude was a little bit much for the room. Number 2. The Justinian Plague Running for 8 years, the Justinian Plague was the world's first pandemic. Carried by rats, this plague was a massive blow to the empire, though one they did ultimately recover from. While nowhere near as well documented as the Black Plague, a distant ancestor to the Justinian Plague, the majority of the reports of its effects would be recorded by John of Ephesus and Evagrius Scholasticus. At its peak, 10,000 people succumbed a day, and history remembers it as the first devastating Great Plague, and arguably the deadliest. Number 1. The Canon of Constantinople Now, Tearing down the walls of a city is difficult, but Constantinople had been built to last. So when the Ottomans began their assault on the city, they needed something better to break in. Enter the Basilic. Taking three months to build, requiring a crew of 400 men and 60 oxen to move, this cannon was an absolute behemoth. Its projectiles weighed in at 1.2 Tons, and the force of the shot was not only enough to breach the city's walls, but kill some of its operators in the process. A single shot created so much heat that the cannon had to be soaked in warm oil to prevent the sudden temperature change of its cooling from widening the fissures within the cannons, and it could not be fired more than three times in a single day. After six weeks of constant use, the cannon just completely fell apart, destroyed by its own obsession. Power. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a good one.